And we have a Patreon poll topic. And how do you access our Patreon? Patreon.com slash CU podcast and marvel at all that we will offer you. Ian's got to do a writing. Did you do one this week, Ian? No. Oh, Portland, you didn't? No. All right. You no, I'm, and I'm writing. I'm letting myself slide on that one because ah. Portland was an, a, a mess. But I will have a good mess. But I will have a writing up uh, shortly this week. Okay. So, wow. This is a three-way split in the 30s. Oh. We're getting better at doing these topics. In third place, a 31%. What pinball arcade games would be in your dream arcade? They pump back up the list. Pump, pump, pump 32% it. second place. What's the dream convention panel you want to see? And in first place, 37% favorite board games. Ian, take it away. Ian, what are some of Holy your favorite Holy shit, board I games? thought that we were going to... I thought for certain the panel one was a guaranteed... A guaranteed pick. You don't know the will of the patrons. Um, so I, I do like to play a lot of board games, but the ones that I think that I always go back to that are uh, classics for me, um, I cannot get enough Scrabble, and I will play Othello at any uh, time of the day. Um, what, do, what do you like about Scrabble? Scrabble, um, so I grew up playing Scrabble. I remember It's like one of the first board games I remember learning how to play, which is funny because obviously it requires quite a bit more thought than a, you know a, a kid is, is going to have. But I remember... I remember, you know, it, it's always been a big game on my uh, mom's side of the family. Um, big extended family over there. And holiday get-togethers were always, you know, there was at least a couple Scrabble boards out and people would sure. be playing. Um, and being young, I, of course, took an interest in what, what you know, my, my family was doing. So uh, my mom would, you know, slowly from a very early age was telling me how to, you know, play the game and put words together. And um, I like it because it's, it's not only it's not only like a, a game to stretch your brain and kind of work on vocabulary and stuff like that, but it's a strategy game. And so many, so few people who don't play a lot of Scrabble sure. don't realize that it's a fucking board control strategy yeah, game. You got it. Like it's it's words, but it's a war out there on that board yep. too. It's all about setting up your position so you can make your attack for later. And you know sometimes making that two letter word that doesn't look like you know anything is what you need to do because you've you got another word in your head. You've got something that you're setting up. So it's 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 a spelling game. And at the base of it, people are like, oh, that's quaint. But it's also a vicious battle for board control. And I fucking love that about Scrabble. It's so good. Good Scrabble is so good. Um, anyway, yeah, sorry. Are, are, you, are you a Monopoly fan at all? No, I hate I, Monopoly. I used to be a Monopoly fan. And then it's funny because it was created to show the, the bad sides of capitalism and people tearing each other yeah. apart. And that's where the game ends up usually. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's just, it's just fun. I, we had the we had the, we had the, we had the Cheerios giveaway uh, 50th anniversary version from like 85 where they came back with the wooden pieces for the first time in the, in the middle because yeah. they didn't do that for a while. And we played a lot. We loved it. Um, I loved the game Ghost. It was a Milton Bradley game, I believe. I don't think it was Parker Brothers, where it was like a strategy game. They yep. glow in the dark pieces. You had like um, about 12 pieces each, and you had good pieces and bad pieces. So the object, and you can't see what pieces you have versus your opponent because the dots are on the other side. There's, yeah, it's it, like, it was like uh, Stratego. Uh, green, and, green and red pieces. Um, so the idea was to capture the evil ghost, but not the bad ghost. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I mean, the evil ghost, not the good ghost. If you capture too many good ghosts, you lost. At the same time, your good ghosts could try to escape out the out the, the sides. The sides. So it was a gambit whether or not you think your, your opponent's bluffing. Maybe they're sending an evil ghost down that you want to capture, or it's a good ghost. So you don't know what you're capturing. It's like a total crapshoot, but there is a little strategy involved. And I, I'd love to play it again today because as a kid with my sister, I probably didn't know the, in, the intricacies of the strategy that were involved. I, hear, I I had it too. I remember getting that game from a uh, from a, a flea market when I was younger, and I freaking loved it. That game was yeah. a lot of fun. I liked some of those blind like bluffing type games like that. Yeah. Like I always I I I've, I haven't played it like at all. As it was an called adult. Ghost. It was Milton yeah. Bradley. I, yeah, I looked it up. Um, it's a nice looking game too. Yeah, it's just a cute, cool little layout, and it's you know not too complex. Now in terms of complexity, if you go you go Mousetrap, I still like Mousetrap, and um, people don't understand that you were supposed to build. Build it as you went. Right, you land yeah. it. You don't build it all, but people just like to build it. It's still they still they probably still make mouse. They do. Oh, it's, they do. It's, it's brilliant. Oh, they'll never stop making that. And it didn't break. I, I never had a break either. It always worked. Like the pieces were sturdy at least back in the day. Even, you know the man, the, the man in the the old timey man taking the dive in the, in the tub, things like that. So if um, you liked ghosts, did you ever play Stratego? I, I think I did, but I was too too young to understand it. I probably would, it's sure. sort of similar. You just it, not it, capture certain it, pieces. It, it more it, it's it's more complicated than ghosts, but it's still all about like blind bluffing and stuff like that. Okay, it's about blind bluffing. Uh, yeah, you. I never played Risk. That should be a game I should be playing. That sounds like a fun game. Or or, or Axis and Allies, which is kind of like that, more complex. Like, I, I love should, Risk. Um, 
I think I, I have it from the swap meet. Whenever we go, uh, John and I play a lot of Risk. Used to play a lot of Risk, and we play it all the way through. We're one of those groups that, like, when we settle in for a game of Risk, we're rolling to the very end. Um, You're rolling deep. Rolling deep. Like, yeah, there's there's no shortcuts or anything like that. The last time uh, I played a full five-player game, it was Vani, myself, John, uh, and two of my other friends, my friend Chris and my friend Alex, and it was a four-hour game, and Vani, ref- Vani came in second place, and she refused <laughs> to succeed, or she, re- she refused to um, surrender. Uh, they rolled every last die wow. until she was just she was completely wiped out. out of troops. She made John work well, for that victory. <laughs> all right. I, I respect that. War of attrition. Um, and then, of course, I mean, I got I, I love chess. Uh, Ian talks about times. I, I love chess, too. I, yes. I played chess in high school. I was an overachiever, a lazy overachiever at chess in high school. I think I told a story a couple times. I won't get into it now, but I did, I did better than I should have with no training. And I really think I should have committed myself to it. And learned openings and strategies. I think I could have done something with it. And I still enjoy it. Do you I ever play. Um, play backgammon? I started. No, back- I never got into backgammon. I'm, I've been getting into backgammon lately again. Is it's it, a, it's it, stupid fun. Good yeah, strategy. It's, it's a that? lot of fun. A lot yeah, of good I don't know strategy. About. We had the board. You had the little shakers. Yeah, the little cool little dice shakers with that. I never got into backgammon. All right, any other ones? We we'll have time for a Q and A. But any any other ones you want to mm. discuss that, that are true to your heart? Mm, I'm good. I'm good. We can move on. Monopoly, Mousetrap, uh, Dizzy Dinosaur was great. Oh, I had the block. That. Yeah, I had Dizzy Dinosaur. It was all about the toys. and See, here's the thing about board games now. Board games now are about like tabletop and being ultraly, uh, you know, or simulating something or you know all, all these rules. Back in the 80s and, and early 90s, it was all just like toys and, you know, Volcano Mountain and, and wiping your little your, your little toys out and Dizzy Dinosaur. Things like that's how the board games were to draw you in. I'm sure they still make it, but not like how they used to. Sure. You know, those commercials are great. Now I want to do, do like a four-hour block of like watching old board game commercials. Like party, pizza party. Which hey, everybody, memory. there's a brand new game, pizza memory. party. That's the name. Sorry. Okay, moving on. 